Hello and welcome back to the 14th Prismatic Devlog. I know it's been a very, very long time since the last one. I know I said I was going to like do them more often. Look, just I've been busy and I can finally say that we are ready to actually start making the game. And I know I like say that, I say that to myself every few months after I finish like a, a big system or something and it's like, okay, now we can actually make the game. But look, it's uh, it's about the journey, not the destination. Making this project isn't necessarily for the outcome. It's for the journey and documenting the journey and, you know, being able to help everyone else with their, you know, game development journey. How many times can I say journey in the one sentence? Anyway, so today's journey we're going to be having a little dive into, you know, all of the wacky stuff that I've been doing uh, with this project. But there is a ridiculous amount of stuff to cover. It's probably going to look and sound a little bit different uh, if this is, you know, the first time seeing what we've been up to since the last devlog. Now that Unreal Engine has finally loaded, um, let's dive in to what we've been doing. Uh, this is a very silly little <laughs> test level. Ignore this. This isn't, this isn't, this is all unplanned, obviously. So I've gone ahead and just set up a few little, you know, areas. Um, this is going to be like our, our testing level where there's kind of a little, a module for each, I guess, gameplay feature. So one of the kind of bigger systems that ties a lot of you know, the, the things in this game together, uh, is our new, uh, we call it surface hit data or surface data system. Um, essentially it's just a really easy way for us to, you know, query a surface and get a bunch of information about it. Like, you know, what particles should, you know, we, we spawn when we hit it. Um, does it have any damage resistances? Does it, you know, what sounds does it play? And a bunch of other really, you know, important data. Um, you know, how hard is it? How, like, solid is it? And it gets used in pretty much every system in the game in some form or another. <laughs> um, you can see here that, you know, we're, we're spawning some sand particles and playing some sand footstep or impact sounds and, you know, dirt when we're here and grass when we're over here and just some dust on the wood and same with, you know, dust on the, uh, on the stone and that kind of stuff. Um, now this goes one step further because it's not just when we hit, you know, or when something hits this, it also takes into account what was the thing that did the hitting. Um, so for example, if I just spawn some, some armor everywhere, um, we've found a breastplate and we've got some, you know, some, uh, plate legs and, you know, maybe we will put on uh, a chain mail shirt. Um, you can see also that, you know, we're using some different sounds now, but if I, for example, dodge roll, um, you can see that metal surfaces when they hit something like stone will actually cause sparks uh, and this also goes for uh you know weapons and items and all that kind of stuff it's a very robust system uh and it just takes in two inputs it just works it just works so that's a really exciting system um that you know i took a, a quite a while to kind of get that all sorted um, it does also work with things like arrows um, so you know if I just shoot a test arrow over here you can see that the arrow bounced off the stone it, it didn't deal enough damage to the stone to penetrate it but if we yeet it into this wood you can see that it got stuck in the wood and so when we're actually doing these uh, you know kinematic animation collisions so you know footsteps and dodge roll you know our back collides with the thing uh, what we're actually doing behind the scenes is dealing damage to our character so every time we take a step uh, in theory we're taking damage you can see up here to the bottom 
of our feet. And one of the reasons we do that is because we can then get the map of armor that the, the character's wearing that is covering that particular spot. And we can actually get the hit surface from that armor. So at the moment, we're just wearing no shoes. Um, so this is just leather against stone. Nothing very exciting. But for example, we could get our greaves and we could say that the bottom of the shoes are made of plate armor for example you can hear that kind of metal sound um and, <laughs> and uh you can see now we're causing sparks wherever we're standing because uh, obviously metal on stone creates sparks and blah 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 so a little side effect of this is that we can make particular surfaces deal damage to uh, characters or objects when they impact on them. So for example, we could have like some sharp rocks or some thorny ground that will deal damage if you've got bare feet or you're not wearing like a shirt and you dodge roll over it. So for example, I've set grass to just have a really high slash damage output, um, <laughs> like ridiculously high. And so you can see that my character is slowing down because their legs are damaged. But if I was wearing those boots that we've made the uh, the soles metal of earlier, um, we would last a lot, lot longer and not really take any slash damage from that exact same grass. We can also deal durability damage, um, you know, when you're rolling around on rough surfaces with just like fabric armor and whatnot. Another fun little interaction. Now, another cool thing that you might've noticed before when I was walking on the grass is they all make different sounds depending on what surface they are hitting. Uh, and the way that we do that, or at least one of the ways we do that is we actually lower the, the kind of attack of the sounds. So for example, the, the bass sound is that kind of metal clack. And that's basically the raw sound because stone has a hardness of one, that being, you know, rock solid, literally. Um, but if we move over to the grass, you can kind of hear it's still that same sound, but it's, it's, it's like smoothed out at the start. So if you've ever done any audio work you'll know about you know envelope filters and ad and adsr and blah 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 um essentially think of it as the sound goes like this has a really high attack uh really sharp attack uh, it's a, a transient um and then it has a little bit of sustain and it fades out into nothingness and what we're doing is kind of cutting off this part so that it's just this kind of smooth, we only get like the ring out of that metal sound. In the end, it means that we have a really, really diverse range of sound effects uh, with a lot less effort in the long run. So we don't need a sound effect for metal sword hitting grass, metal sword hitting sand, metal sword hitting plate armor, metal sword hitting, you know, flesh or whatever, whatever. We just layer two sounds on top of one another and we, you know we use some modifications based on the the surface data and this also goes for like um you know when we're actually hitting things as well so when we hit this stone it's the full clacker uh, and then when we hit the grass then it's a lot less extreme but yeah it's just a oh it's just a really good system that's like super easy for us to use um you can hear it here working with the you know if i let this guy hit me in the body uh you heard the chain mail you heard the oh, there you go hit me in the the what's it called breastplate so now we're going to move on to all of the physics related systems in the game that being uh just physics in general physics damage physics audio and sounds physics interaction so our character actually physically like pulling things around the level we've got buoyancy physics we've got levitation physics it's gonna be a lot of fun but first i just want to let you guys know 
about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Now, I know you guys have heard me talk about Skillshare over and over many times across many different videos, but there is no better time than right now to start learning a new skill. And with the link that I've provided in the description of the video, you can get one free trial month of Skillshare. No questions asked, completely free. Just click that damn link in the description. <laughs> Signing up via that link is a great way to help me and the channel out completely free of charge on your end. So it ends up being a huge benefit for me and this channel. And it's also a huge benefit for you because you get to learn literally whatever you want with very, very high quality videos, much higher quality than than what I'm doing. <laughs> so thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And let's continue on with our physics quest. So another system that benefits very uh, heavily uh, from this <laughs> from this hit data system thingo is the the physics object system that we've been working on. Um, so for example, we can push things around and be pushed around by physics objects. And there was a lot of uh, a lot of trial and error with getting this to actually work. Um, because obviously we don't want these crates colliding with the mesh of the character because, you know, keyframed animations have theoretically infinite force behind them. So, you know, you might have noticed in some of your projects, if you have collision on your characters, that physics objects just get like yeeted into the stratosphere uncontrollably. And so, you know, by removing the collision from the, the character, um, you know, we can actually now do some more, have some more controlled behavior. And so, yeah, we can push these around. We can actually, you know, climb on top of them as well. Another system that complements this one is our physical grabby system thingo. Uh, I don't know what to call it. I think I call it the physical, physical interaction component. Uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, basically, we can actually drag things around the world as our character. Uh, a lot of games that I've played have this kind of, you know, you can grab items and move them around and pick them up and place them elsewhere and all that kind of stuff. And I was just thinking, like, you know, how how hard can it really be? Uh, it turns out it is quite hard. I had to learn how to use Control Rig. Control Rig's pretty cool. It's almost like, um, it's like shaders, but for skelly meshes so expect some control rig tutorial videos at some point get excited <laughs> uh but anyway yeah we can drag things around using our character's hand uh, or hands i've just got it set up to use one hand at the moment for simplicity but uh this is an easy way to showcase the the sliding sounds that we've been working on so you can hear that again we kind of use the hardness and softness of materials to tone down you know, the wood scraping sound. And obviously we have the um, the stone sound underneath it, but then if we bring it over here. It's a lot more chill when it's on the grass. And all of these physics objects have uh, hit detection and, you know, they play hit sound. So if I like turn this on its side, you can hear when it hits the stone, it goes thud a little bit. There, you heard that little donk. And if we get that donk on the grass, uh, it won't be as intense. Pretty cool. It's like, it's, it's almost like magic. Once I like had all this stuff kind of sorted out and started using it, it kind of did just feel like magic. Like it's just call this function, it handles all the rest, you're done. So that brings us to uh, another cool physics system, uh, which is actually our buoyancy system, or at least the first iteration of it. Um, it is very fun to doodle around with. Uh, so I can, you know, chuck this into the water. Uh, it will float. It's all accurate collision with the, the waves, which is a shader effect. Um, and because our buoyancy system is additive, um, so it's just kind of sitting on top of the physics engine, 
uh, we can, again, interact with all these like we would with any other physics object. And if we actually go to our weather parameters, here they are, uh, we can, you know, make this really still. And obviously, you know, they're, they're going to go along with the waves and stuff, but we can, you know, make some pretty extreme waves. And, you know, yeah, it, it all it just works, uh, which is very surprising. It was another one of those moments where it kind of felt a bit like magic once it was all done. Uh, lastly, I guess while we're on the topic of buoyancy, the other other thing we were doodling with uh, on stream was the levitating things and, you know, making them obviously work with all of our kind of physics stuff that we were doing, um, which is really fun to kind of just doodle with. Like, it's 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 one of those, like, oddly satisfying kind of, you know, I, I can't even explain it. <laughs> but again, this all works with our, you know, physics dragging system. Um, we can even kind of ride them. Uh, this is obviously a bug, but we can actually, like, flying carpet ourselves around. I can show you the world. Something, something, DMCA strike. So yeah, a lot of fun. And of course, it isn't a physics system without physics damage. Uh, so again, all of these physics bodies, they, <laughs> they deal damage to characters and stuff. Um, it's very kind of Breath of the Wild, you know, commit Bokoblin genocide-esque. Uh, it's a lot of... It's a lot of fun. You know, we could potentially crush someone with a big stack of crates like this. <laughs> or crush ourselves. Uh, and again, it just, it just works. Uh, it all interfaces with one another. All the sounds are there. And I guess that's sort of the way that I, that I like to build these systems. I sort of like to make them all very uh, generic and able to interface with one another super easily. So while we're in this test level, uh, one of the things we're actually working on last was the uh, the door meta sound. Um, big shout out to Akudo, who's our, our sound designer, um, for you know coming up with this. I, it's it's like it's it's baffling how kind of realistic it is. Oh. So yeah, it's a mixture of the. Uh, the creak that you kind of hear at the end and when it's going really slow is procedurally done. And then as it gets past a certain threshold of, of you know, swing speed, um, it turns into a recording of my studio door, which is notoriously very creaky. Um, so yeah, this is just like the first iteration of it. But... It is very, very cool. <laughs> uh, obviously, there's no, like, open and close sounds yet, but just the swinging of it, it's amazing. Um, they also deal damage as a, <laughs> as a byproduct of our physics system. So, you know, again, anything that is physically simulated um, can deal damage to characters and... <laughs> Uh, so you can expect, you know, if you ever open a door super suddenly, uh, there might be someone on the other side of it that will be quite angry. Uh, or maybe, you know, an explosion will blow a door open and then that will hit you and push you back and you'll get knocked down. There's just like so much potential for just kind of wacky interactions that I'm very excited to, uh, to explore. <laughs> uh, we can also <laughs> climb over these doors, apparently. <laughs> Which I didn't realize. Um, we also exert forces when we're climbing, like backwards. So if there was something really unstable and you tried climbing on it, uh, it would fall over and you would not be able to climb on it. So for example, if we set up something a bit silly like uh, a crate, on a crate, on a crate, and this is like a big overhang, 
And so if we tried to, you know, climb on top of this, uh, it would fall over and we would not be able to climb it, which is, you know, a lot of fun. And likewise, just as another example, if we try and climb on top of this, it will, oh, yeah, fall over. We won't make it up on top of it and it fell down and we, we ragdolled and got damaged. So yeah, it's all a very interconnected system. Obviously, you know, you can imagine all of the, the puzzles and creative ways to, you know, deal with enemies and, um, being able to, you know, get over certain places because you can, you know, make a bridge or find something that floats in water and use that to, you know, cross a, a big body of water and stuff like that. It's kind of just like endless possibilities. And I really do just like making these tools that will allow us to make a more interesting game. And I think because, you know, I obviously don't work for a, a studio or anything, I don't have any deadlines. It's sort of like we can just experiment. I do have a lot of trust in that process of, you know, just doing what feels right without necessarily thinking about it too much. The worst case scenario is that I only learn something new and have something to teach everyone else, whether it's like a failure or it's just some cool little trick or whatever. That's the worst case scenario. The best case scenario is exactly that, but it also makes the game, you know, look and feel and play better and, you know, create a more uh, interesting experience. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the inventory and equipment system for the game, because it's basically done. Uh, a lot of the UI is obviously very placeholder and not finished and there's a few kind of visual quirks however i'm actually like super stoked with how it's turning out uh, i've been working on this with your sandbox who's also a fellow uh, tutorial creator and he's most of the brains behind the operation uh, especially when it comes to the the user interface and how all of the widgets and stuff work let's jump into our test scene and if we press B, which is our, uh, I guess, bag, maybe, uh, we can see a very temporary layout with, like, just a bunch of different equipment slots. But we can, you know, take our pants off. We can take our shirt off. Just chuck them on the ground. And we will just use the G button to spawn a bunch of equipment everywhere. Uh, so, you know, we can kind of swag out a bit. We can put some boots on. Um, we can put some armor on, anything but pants. Just got plate legs, but no, no under legs. <laughs> so we kind of got arseless chaps on at the moment. Um, but you can see that our character actually physically, you know, picks it up. Um, obviously there's a lot of jank in it and we don't actually have any like put on animations, which there will be in the future. And it's very literal, uh, the way that it all works and yeah we generate some thumbnails using a, a thumbnail generator uh, we can take them off and and yeet them uh, the main thing that i wanted to do with the equipment system is that you don't actually have like just an inventory so every piece of equipment has the potential to be a container for other things so if i get this backpack and wear it then you can see we have the the backpack um, but it's also got, you know, a grid inside it. And so we can pick up this thing. It will go into our backpack. We can move it around, you know, Diablo style. Um, it's all spatial. Uh, items have different sizes and we can, you know, we can simulate a lot of stuff with just the size itself. Uh, we can equip things from our bag to our person. It gets a little bit more complicated because we can actually have a container within a container so i've just made this brigandine able to hold a, a two by three and now i've put these plate legs inside that and we can you know chuck this out into the world and we can pick it up again and you know it's all persistent oh well actually i've put it on this time uh and you can see these plate creases uh in there i can transfer them from that one 
into this one. Now, it might seem like a little bit extra, like containers within containers, inventory, Tetris, you know, whatever. Uh, the kind of gist of it, though, is that what you have on your character has to have, you know, a pro and a con. So, big, huge backpack can hold, you know, heaps of loot, heaps of supplies, potions, uh, arrows, ammo, extra weapons, all that kind of stuff. But it will slow you down and you'll be less accurate. You know, it's more cumbersome to have a big traveling backpack. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, pros and cons. Maybe you could mitigate that by having a stronger character or not wearing armor that doesn't weigh you down as much. But essentially every decision that you make has some kind of drawback on top of the, the obvious benefits. Now, one of the main obstacles for this system was building it in a way that functioned generically between everything. So, for example, we needed it to be able to work with other containers. So this is just a chest in the world, for example. Um, we can move something from our backpack into the chest and it's all good. We could move something from the chest into the world. And, you know, we just, we eat it. Um, we could move something from our body into the chest. And it's absolutely fine. Or the chest back onto our body. Um, we can also remove other people's equipment, you know, if we're obviously allowed to. So we could take this guy's shirt off and put it in our backpack. Uh, we could take this guy's pants off and throw it into the world. Or we could take our pants off and give them to him. And, you know, again, this all just magic. It works. Uh, it's very dummy complex. <laughs> uh, we can even do things like transfer someone else's shirt into a chest if they're, you know, obviously near one another or we could give this guy our backpack um and now all of a sudden he's got all of our stuff or we could get this chain mail from his backpack and put it on our character uh like this and you know it's it's all there it's all registered to our character it's ready to function um could i okay i, I can yeah i can <laughs> damage myself with these weapons um and you can hear the chainmail, you know, getting hit. I'm honestly just really relieved that it, that it all came together so well. Um, obviously, there's, again, some visual bugs and, you know, obvious jank. But it's just, I don't know, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It'll make for some interesting gameplay situations. Uh, especially when the proper animations are implemented. Because, you know, you might have heaps and heaps of arrows in your big backpack and you know if you're shooting with a bow character shoots and they have to get another arrow out of their backpack or whatever but you know a big backpack it's hard to get the arrow out of it you know it'll take time whereas if you had a, a specialized quiver just for arrows that was either on your hip or on your back then you'd be able to just pull an arrow out straight away and you know go to town so there is this kind of logistical balance that will be going on with containers and what do you favor over the other you know do you want to forego having a backpack all together and just have like three quivers with different arrow types or different ammo types or you know maybe you want to have a backpack and two like satchels in place of sword scabbards and just rely on the weapon that you have in your hands but you have all this extra storage space just like all, all of the possibilities that it brings up and all of the, again, the decisions and logistical decisions that the, the player will have to make, um, as well as NPCs. All of the NPCs and AI play by the same rules as the, the player character. And again, when you're like looting bodies and stuff, um, you know, you might just want the arrows from a quiver or you could just take the entire quiver or you could take someone's backpack with a quiver in it with the arrows in the quiver you know it, that's why we have the nested containers and stuff i feel like i've just rambled and rambled and rambled i didn't really have any direction 
you know, for this devlog. I just kind of wanted to share what I've been up to. A big shout out to some of the guys that I'm working with on, you know, some of the features that we just saw today. Akudo with all of the, the sound effects done by Akudo. Um, Cloud for helping tidy up the, the mocap and doing some of the attack animations. And obviously Sandbox for his work with the, the inventory system, uh, which is... Look, I've put him through a lot. I've put him through a lot with this system, but it's all it's all worth it in the end. Uh, and there is some work from some other people in the team that I'm excited to share with you guys in a future devlog. If you do want to know more about any of these systems on a kind of deeper level, just let me know in the comments and I might do a follow-up video. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Uh, there is obviously stuff that... I didn't cover because either I didn't have time or I completely forgot about it or I thought that I'd covered it in a previous video or something. Obviously, if you do want to stay more up to date with, you know, what's going on in Prismatica land, uh, Twitch is the best place to do so. I've also got a VODs channel on YouTube that I upload all of the Twitch VODs to. So if you don't like going on Twitch and you just want to stay on YouTube, I recommend subscribing to that channel. And before we go, just make sure you click on that link in the description to get your one month free of Skillshare. It'll be a massive help to me and the channel and the development of the game. And it will also really help you out because you'll have access to all of the content on Skillshare and you'll be able to, you know, just learn stuff. So big thanks to Skillshare again for sponsoring the video. And I guess with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.